Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, in the last class of Advanced Computer Networks and Security, we had learned about different classifications of a network. We can classify the network based on the way they are connected as point-to-point -point or multi-point networks, or we can also classify the networks based on uh, the size or the area, geographical area that they cover. So, if a network is small in size, then it is called as LAN local area network. If it is little larger that covers a city or maybe a town, then it is called as MAN, metropolitan area network. When uh, the uh, network is very large that spans countries, continents, or whole of the planet, then it's a very huge network, which is generally referred to as a wide area network, okay? All right. So today we are going to learn uh, about uh, in the last class i had told you there's some points that we that is going to be a repetition from the previous semester which we will have a presentation about it that is osi reference model and tcpip reference model so these two standards are uh, commonly used in networking and that we are going to learn i mean that we are going to have a presentation from uh, your friends so uh, today what we are going to learn is about cellular telephony Okay, now cellular telephony was quite a, a, a new concept uh, to people who were using uh, landline phones, say 20 years back, say in 2000 to 2010. That era was the era when cellular telephony was getting introduced all over the world. But 2010, we are in 2021 now, it's been about 10 years more, so totally about 20 years now. But cellular telephones, the technology has tremendously advanced and we are able to access a lot of services over the cellular telephone. But the way, basic working of cellular telephones al almost remains same. So that is what we are going to learn today. We are going to understand what is cellular telephony. So first of all, try to understand that uh, telephone networks have evolved, all right? Uh, say about 100 years back or 80, 90 years back, telephone networks were introduced uh, into the market. Uh, uh, they Initially, the kind of telephone, there were very few subscribers, very few users of telephone networks. And they were all landline phones at that time. Okay, so uh, today what you find is hardly anybody has landline phones, but rather we have cellular phones or mobile phones. Cellular telephony is also called as mobile telephone, okay? So if you're thinking about 50, 60 years back, even when I was a child, we used to have landline telephones, which were very huge, making a long distance call used to be very, very cumbersome. First, we have to call up the uh, operator, then she would connect us through a trunk call to the destination. So that was uh, uh, very cumbersome. So as technology advanced, most of the telephone networks became digital telephone networks. And people started feeling this necessity to communicate with others, even when they are moving. So why the word mobile phone? Mobile phone in the sense, the user is mobile. The user is not fixed at one location. The user can move around from one location to another. Still, he is able to communicate with the help of his telephone. That is why we use the word mobile phone, okay? Now, um, uh, since you all are born in the uh, last 20 years, you people are born with a mobile phone. But when we were small, we didn't even have a phone at home. Forget about a mobile phone. We didn't even have a landline phone. So for you, it may not be a big deal, but you must be able to understand that mobile phones have evolved. Mobile phones were invented and as technology advanced, they evolved. Why did they evolve? because there were telephone users, landline telephone users, who were having this restriction that if at all a landline phone is there, they can use it only inside their own location. Only in one location they have to sit and operate. Whereas 
if they want to communicate with people when they are moving when they are going from one place to another then they were unable to do it keeping this in mind the cellular telephony was introduced so we will try to understand the basic concept behind cellular telephony in case of cellular telephony you should know why the word cellular has come the word cellular has come because uh, in cellular telephony the geographical area covered by a particular uh, uh, you know base station or when a particular person is moving around the geographical area is divided into smaller units and each unit is called as a cell okay for example imagine we have belgaum city so belgaum city will be divided into smaller divisions like for example tilakwadi could be one cell or angol could be another cell there could be a cell like bhagyanagar another cell like maybe uh, uh, vadgaon and one more for the rural rural maybe machhe and all that you you people must understand a huge geographical area is divided into smaller areas or smaller units which are called as cells that is why the name cellular telephony wherein each cell will have a tower which is referred to as a base station you people must have observed these towers all over uh, belgaum everywhere that you go have you observed on top of la, uh, you know very huge buildings or maybe if there is a big farm land then a huge tower is erected there that is called as a base station bs what is shown in the diagram if you can see on the screen the area that is covered is called as a cell and at the middle of each cell there will be a tower a mobile tower which is referred to as bs bs stands for base station then uh, this base station is capable of transmitting and receiving the data okay so it is able to transmit and receive the data from small uh, terminals which are referred to as mobile station ms stands for mobile station mobile station is nothing but mobile phones that you possess i possess so many of our friends also possess so each one of us will have mobile station one base station can cater to thousands of mobile station in one cell so one base station is capable of transmitting and receiving the data from thousands and thousands of mobile stations which are present in one cell all right so you are going to have a base station you are also going to have a mobile station many mobile stations inside a cell in the diagram only one is shown but as many users are there that many mobile stations you will have each base station is connected to a mobile switching center a mobile switching center which is shown in the diagram as msc is a centralized uh, unit which consists of a database and also necessary software which uh, the database contains all the subscribers or users of cellular telephony in that area so what is the use of this mobile switching center it will act as a intermediary or it will act as a switch which is able to connect uh, mobile phones to other mobile phones mobile phones to landline phones or landline phones to mobile phones landline phones which is shown in the diagram as a stationary phone stationary means which doesn't move so you must understand mobile phone means your cell phone and stationary phone means your landline phone so if we have a landline phone the uh, you know like bsnl we have or even airtel we have they such landline phones are able to communicate with the help of pstn pstn stands for public switch telephone network so bsnl is an example of public switch telephone network or in fact airtel also gives us landline connection jio also gives us landline connection they all are examples of public switch telephone network so understand with the help of a mobile switching center now in the diagram one line is missing between mobile switching center and the pstn uh, the diagram is not very clear there but that you can just try to uh, remember that the mobile switching center is capable of allowing two mobile phones to talk to each other that is communicate with each other that is two people who own two mobile phones they can communicate with each other so mobile switching center can also connect to a pstn 
that is public switch telephone networks and allow you to connect to a landline phone so you people you must have observed when you dial your, your friend's number if he has got a mobile phone you can connect if you want to connect to your home where there is a landline phone through your mobile phone you can connect what does that mean the base station and the mobile switching center together they coordinate in order to transmit and receive signals voice signals over which communication can happen okay so first of all we have to understand how transmission and receiving of calls is going to happen let us think that we are we'll take one example and we'll think that we are trying to set up a call between a mobile phone that is a cell phone and a landline phone that is a stationary phone so i am trying to connect between a ms and a stationary phone ms means mobile phone mobile station okay so whenever we want to connect between a mobile station and the stationary phone first you dial the number on your mobile phone the moment you dial a number uh, uh, uh you people have learned in the previous semester that radio waves are commonly used in mobile uh, uh, communication that is in cellular telephony so using radio waves the uh, mobile phone sends the signal to the gets connected and sends the signal to the nearest base station so your call is first relayed to the tower that is to the base station now what the base station will do it will accept those signals and transmit those signals to the mobile switching center now this mobile switching center has got a database it will search the database and try to check whether the outgoing call the number that you have dialed is a valid number uh, say for example it is for a particular landline phone then it will start getting connected to the nearest public switch telephone network because landline phone you can connect only through a pstn so from base station the call goes to msc from msc it gets connected to the nearest pstn for example say bsnl you are trying to connect from there bsnl will switch it to the landline phone so see how the connection is going to happen you are you are a user having a mobile phone in your cell you dial the number the number uh, or the signals are relayed to the nearest base station the base station will take the signals transmit them to the mobile switching center mobile switching center will search the database of users and try to connect it to the nearest pstn because it's a landline phone that we are trying to connect and pstn will switch the call or transmit the data transmit the signals to the stationary phone the moment this connection becomes complete you have to un understand that cellular telephones are connection oriented networks unless a connection is set up data transmission is not going to happen circuit switching you have learnt in the previous semester same circuit switching is used in case of cellular telephony a complete connection dedicated connection is set up from your mobile station to the base station to the msc then to the pstn and lastly to the stationary phone once this connection is complete the other end starts ringing the moment it starts ringing the other user will pick they both can communicate with each other by transmitting voice signals okay same is going to be true when the mobile station is trying to uh, receive the safe call for example suppose from a landline we are trying to call to a mobile number how do how will the uh, transmission happen from the landline phone you will dial the uh, uh, mobile number it will be relayed to the nearest public switch network which will look into its own database and transmit the call to the mobile switching center mobile switching center in turn will relay it to the base station and from the base station we are able to connect to the mobile station that is to the mobile phone so this is how even if a user is moving around he is not located in one place with the help of base station now base station is generally placed in the middle of the cell so the signals are relayed in all the directions and the moment the number the signal is received by the uh, authenticated destination it is recognized and that particular phone will start ringing so you must understand the closer you are to the base station you get better network now this i don't have to tell you you people know this uh, 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 sometimes you know you people have come across the situation suppose you go away from the city to some outskirts you go okay 
so the moment you go away from the city you you are going away from the base station that is away from the tower when you go away from the tower the network will be less and when the network is less you can see it on your mobile phone okay suppose you go very far away and there is no network around you are unable to connect so base station the placement of the base station is very very important now here what is shown in the diagram is single base station but if at all you have gone away from your cell to some other cell for example suppose you have gone from belgaum to bombay or maybe to pune now what will happen you have gone away from your cell and maybe the service provider for example airtel you have subscribed in uh, karnataka in belgaum the moment you go away from your cell and you go uh, you know you pass the border and you go to some other state maybe the service provider is different for example vodafone is uh, there or idea is there in maharashtra so the moment you uh, cross the border you are going to your services may be disrupted for some time yet they will be revived once again the moment you enter some other state or some other cell and in such a case the service that is made available to you is through a third party your airtel network may not be there but through vodafone you are still able to or through idea you are still able to access the network such a service is called as a roaming service you have heard this word called as roaming everybody has heard what is a roaming service when you go away from your cell when you leave your cell and go away from your city or maybe uh, from your service provider to some other then it is called as a roaming service so you will still be able to access a uh, network but maybe uh, since you are going away from your cell you require some other service provider services that would be called as a roaming service so nowadays even roaming has become very common uh, earlier when we were small or maybe when we were young uh, we had to uh, you know if we go away from our cell and we go to another state roaming would uh, be very uh, costly for us when we go to some other state roaming service would start and then incoming will also be charged out outgoing call will also be double like that so whenever we used to cross the border and go to some other state we used to switch off our phone because the call uh, you know the charges for each call would be very very high but today that is not the case roaming service is just a service given to you you are not charged anything extra for roaming service but that was not the case previously 10 years back when if at all you had to take up roaming service it used to be very very costly okay so you should know what is meant by roaming all right now in cellular telephone uh, service a, a a common principle a common phenomenon is employed which is called as frequency reuse principle now first of all we'll try to understand what is frequency reuse principle first of all try to know we are talking about radio frequency whenever we are transmitting data in a cellular telephone network we make use of radio waves now you remember the electromagnetic spectrum last semester i had told you uh, electromagnetic spectrum has got different waves like you have x rays you have you know radio waves you have infrared waves microwaves so each uh, in that spectrum each band the frequency that we get that is uh, and uh, uh, the at what frequency we are able to transmit the data that defines the band so uh, there is a radio waves there is microwaves there is infrared waves there is x rays gamma rays uv rays but we don't use them for transmission because they are very harmful to health what we do is we make use of a lot of uh, bands that are available in the lower frequency in order to transmit the data so now you um, i don't have a diagram with me but i'm sure all of you remember when i had taught you uh, a wireless transmission media i told you those Uh, that electromagnetic spectrum so you all must understand the radio waves that we have that band it is a very small frequency band and we have millions of user users all over the world so what happens there are so many users and the frequency band is so small so if the frequency band is small that means uh, users are more resources less that also means you have to reuse that resource again and again that small frequency band that is available for transmission should be reused again and again so frequency reuse principle in the sense 
the whole geographical area is divided into smaller units called as cells and each cell will be given one particular frequency so suppose we have a, a reuse factor of 4 reuse factor of 4 if you can look at the first diagram that is there on the slide reuse factor of 4 means four different cells are there and for each of the cells four different uh, radio frequencies will be used now after the fourth some other cell will be given once again the same frequency as was given to the first cell in the previous uh, uh, sector like that so if you all can see this diagram now i'll try to uh, make use of uh, annotation here if you all can see this diagram this part of the diagram you observe first what is there there is cell number 1 cell number 2 cell number 3 cell number 4 so imagine in this cell where it is written 1 a particular frequency let's call it f1 is used here f2 is used here f3 is used and here f4 is used so whatever is the frequency uh, radio frequency available to you all has been used in the four cells now we don't have any more frequency so what we do the next four cells we will try to i'll try to show it with a different color here the next four cells you now you can observe this part again you have cell number 1 cell number 2 cell number 3 cell number 4 now for this cell number 1 f1 will again be used for this 2 f2 will be used for this 3 f3 will be used and for this 4 f4 will be used now what is the main thing that you have to understand here cell number 4 is there and here cell number 1 is there here cell number 2 is there can you see a common boundary for this one the common boundary is for 4 and 2 so in this cell neither we allocate 4 nor we allocate 2 we allocate either 1 or 3 because if you are allocating the same frequency there is a possibility of signals getting mixed because the same frequency you are using so you should the same four frequency you should use but whenever there is a bordering line whatever frequency you is used on one side of the cell same should not be used on the other side of the cell some other frequency can be used which is not used in the in one part of the cell so if you all can see this two now for two the bordering there are three borders there is uh, this border there is this border and there is this border so this is two no that means the cells which are neighboring to two will not get the same frequency that is f2 will not come what will come there is either f1 or f3 or f4 this will allow us to see to it that there is no interference of signal if you use the same frequency there can be a possibility of interference of signal that is why uh, we make use of some other frequency but the same four frequencies are being used in all the cells the allocation of the frequency is done in such a way that if you are considering one cell the same frequency is not allocated to its neighboring cells to some other cell it will be allocated but not same so you all can see the reuse factor of 7 here reuse factor of 7 means seven different frequencies are used and again reused so if you all can see this part of the diagram there is frequency 1 frequency 2 3 4 5 6 7 so one pattern hmm? now which are the common cells here 5 6 and 4 okay so for if you all can see the cell 5 for its there are three borders for 5 now in all the three borders five has not been used some other has been used for example here seven has been used three has been used two has been used if you are considering this cell that is four its neighboring cell doesn't have four but it has got two and seven so this is uh, generally implemented in order to uh, not only make use of the radio frequency resource in a very effective manner we have very small resource and millions of users so how to uh, you know allocate the frequency bands among so many people the best way to allocate the frequency bands among so many people is to reuse that frequency but while reusing we see to it that the bordering cells do not make use of the same frequency that will allow us to avoid interference of signals i hope i am clear here okay um if you have any doubts you can ask me otherwise i want to continue one or two points more okay 
did you understand frequency reuse principle what frequency are we talking about is anybody listening or all I have do. only kept the class on and you are somewhere else nobody is listening no ma'am we are listening okay what frequency are we talking about we are talking about which frequency telephone telephony yeah radio frequency in cellular telephony radio waves are used radio frequency we are talking so which resource is small or which resource is limited radio waves are limited that bandwidth is very limited that only millions of users have to use so how do they how do we allocate that uh, that uh, radio wave frequency by reusing the radio waves in different cells okay but whenever we are reusing in different cells we see to it that any cell which has been allocated a particular frequency in the bordering cells same frequency is not used some other frequency is used so you should be able to check here this part of the uh, diagram again this part of the diagram if you all can see the same seven frequencies have been used but the pattern has been put in such a way that no two bordering cells get the same frequency okay everybody is understanding this yes ma'am all right so now uh, we will just try to discuss the different uh, generations of cellular telephony okay now you have to understand uh, one thing that cellular telephones have evolved it's not that all of a sudden today what we are using the kind of phones the kind of services they were there 20 years back no 20 years back i remember in 1999 or so 22 years back first time in india cellular telephony was introduced so at that time they were you know first generation uh, mobile phones or first generation cellular telephones were introduced in india but in 1998 or maybe in 2000 around that time the phones that were there they were uh, quite heavy and the services that were available to the users were not the services what we are using today every with every generation of mobile uh, phones or cell phones or cellular telephony the technology has advanced and so have the services become sophisticated so in the in those days in 1998 somewhere to 2000 during that time maybe up to 2002 or 2003 the first generation mobile phones or first generation cellular telephony was implemented now this first generation cellular telephony is based on a concept which is called as amps so in those days all the cellular telephones that were used they were analog telephone systems analog means digital uh, we are not transmitting the data in digital format rather we are transmitting them using analog sig uh, signals so those in those days somewhere in up to 2003 the uh, cellular phones that were there they were all analog cellular phones and they made use of a mechanism they made use of a communication system which was called as advanced mobile phone system amps and amps was based on fdma frequency division multiple uh, access Uh, this we have learnt in the previous semester also fdma tdma cdma all these three we have learnt in the previous semester so i'll not tell you in detail only remember first generation cellular telephones were all analog systems they made use of a mechanism which is called as advanced mobile phone systems and they made use of fdma frequency division multiple access then came uh, after a few years came the second generation of computers Uh, sorry second generation of mobile phones they were based on dams uh, and gsm and also on a standard which is called as is95 so what were this second generation now you have learned this 2g 3g 4g you remember now you people know 
that 2G is nothing but second generation. So with 2G, with 2G uh, cellular telephones, first time digital telephone uh, cellular telephones were introduced. So digital AMPS was used. That is digital advanced mobile phone system. They were not analog systems. They were based on digital communication system, and they used both FDMA as well as TDMA. Okay. Then, as and how technology advanced in second generation only, a very important standard was developed in the European nations, which is used even now, which is called as GSM. GSM stands for Global System for Mobile Communication. So most of your phones are GSM phones. Your the phone that you are buying, uh, the cell phone that you are buying is a GSM phone. Now, what is a GSM phone? it is compatible with the gsm standard gsm is global system for mobile communication it allows digital voice communication plus data services to certain extent that is why uh, in the second generation this was introduced it was used mostly in the european nations and later on adopted by other nations and other countries uh, uh, it 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 is based on the method the for transmitting the data that is tdma time division multiple access also uh, in somewhere in uh, during that time only in uh, most of the western countries a standard was developed which was called as is interim standard 95 now this interim standard 95 was also uh, uh, used for co mobile communications and it was based on cdma code division multiple access i remember very well in 2003 or 2002 or 2003 uh, or 2003 i think i had got a phone a reliance phone my first mobile phone which was a cdma phone so it it was a small phone wherein we could you know talk to each other and we could send only sms nothing else but then sms was was also quite costly 1 rupee one sms at that time maybe 1 rupee or 2 rupees something like that so these services were quite costly at that time because the technology uh, and the infrastructure required to support these kind of a systems were not widely available then came the third generation of mobile phones which was based on imt 2000 that is internet mobile communication uh, standard and this was the first time that mobile phones were not only able with mobile phones user were not only able to communicate orally that is voice communication but for the first time data data services that we have you know all of your phones you start your data the moment you get up no so what is that data you are able to access your services via internet so data services for the first time were available through third generation mobile phones and these third generation mobile phones were based on tdma and cdma now third generation is also very old but in your book they have given only up to third generation we have the fourth generation in some of the nations even 5g services that is fifth generation uh, services have also come so 5g uh, 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 mobile phones are there 5g subscribers are there uh they are even more sophisticated services made available to the end user so at least three up to 3g you should know first generation was based was analog and it was based on advanced mobile phone system second generation saw a lot of activity in terms of digital voice communication one of the important standards that was developed was gsm global system for mobile communication and in the third one third generation IMT that is internet mobile communication standard became very much popular and it allows for both digital data as well as voice communication okay so i would uh, like to stop here i want you all to enter your attendance first and then ask me if you people have any doubts in the exam they either ask you to write a short note on cellular telephony or they may even ask you to um, uh, explain what is meant by frequency reuse principle right 
that frequency reuse principle is generally asked in the exam so you should understand what it is okay uh, if you have any doubts raise your hands and ask me otherwise we'll stop this class should we stop should we stop now yes ma'am okay thank you